Is this the browse farm? There's a storm coming. It's just a little bit too quiet. A little too peaceful. No, run! <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? Okay, but they're just frozen. Right, that's his power. Oh, is that Connie's village? The one his mom escaped from without becoming a titan? Is that what you're bringing, Zeke? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Me and Levi are on exactly the same page. And I feel like that's such a key thing that he's picking up on. He does, though. Secretly, he's really good at that. <laughs> so I've always loved Levi. I feel so much love for him right now, especially. I just feel like I'm looking around for just someone I can still root myself to or anchor some good feelings or whatever. Levi is subtly like just the sweetest person. And because I feel his motives are pure, I feel like that gives him somewhat of a clarity on other people. And his description of Zeke is exactly my own feelings. You can talk about causes all you want, but like, who are you? You know what I mean? Everybody's got noble aspirations. Everybody wants to save the world. Everyone has opinions and thinks that the current opinion they hold is the correct opinion. That's not enough. It often amazes me how people who fight for causes that they feel are good are capable of being so horrible to other people for almost no reason. You know, like to family members or to strangers on the internet. You know, it's just, it's weird. It gets weird real fast. There are a bunch of tests, you know, like, how do you treat people you don't need anything from? How much are you willing to self-correct? How much responsibility can you take for your own experience, for your own feelings in certain situations? And to me, it's, it's sort of like, if you can't do those things, you know, if you can't take care of your basic day-to-day -day actions with others, how could you ever expect to be like an arbiter of justice, you know, or someone who knows what's best for the world? <laughs> Zeke's face was unmoved, leading me to think that he might have expected whatever this is. Is that news of Aaron's escape? Where will Levi fall, I wonder? Maybe Levi can be the one, if anybody, to carry on some of Erwin's ideals. We need a hero. Could that be Levi's arc? That would be incredible. Although probably not. I feel like leadership is too too tall of a mountain for him to climb. Although, I do hope he can have a complete arc the way Erwin had it. You know, maybe Levi can't bring a conclusion to this crisis. Maybe there's nothing he could do to change the outcome. But nevertheless, there's another victory to be had, which is his own personal victory. If if he can rise to the challenge and stay true to his ideals like Erwin did, and not be tempted by all the, the hatred that's just flying out of everyone right now, including the audience, he can have something that to me would be immensely satisfying, which is like a heroic arc, where he, despite all the tragedy, has learned the things he needs to learn to resist the forces that are wrong, even if that costs him. And even better would be if like he did that and actually affected things in a meaningful way, but that's asking a lot. There's something I can imagine for Levi's future that has potential for both heroism and tragedy, even though the result would be the same, just depending on how he looks at it. So one weakness for Levi, one thing we've seen hold him back and actually change the outcome of things is his mercy. And I really hope he holds on to that mercy. But I think the important thing is that he notices that, acknowledges it, and gladly accepts it in the way that Erwin accepted his fate, rather than like makes a blunder because of it and dies sadly, if that makes sense. Just don't lose your goodness, Levi. That's all I ask. Children of the Forest. Meanwhile, Gabby and Falco live in a somewhat nice, normal family life. I'm sure that'll last forever. Seems like she's doing better, though. Right. I had missed that this was actually Sasha's father, and he had promised him a meal. Nicolo, right. And this is where Gabby finds out. Yeah, I also heard it's possible that Sasha's last word wasn't Niku, but Nicola. Nicolo? Ben. Ben. I don't know why that's funny. Oh, we got some other important matters to attend to here. So nice. Oh, 
There was a scene in this room that I guess I haven't figured out still. They were talking trash about Historia, and then there was a bottle of wine in the mix. I had forgotten about that. Come to think of it, John John would have been a great fit for the military police, with his love of the finer things in life. Yeah, I wouldn't drink that if I were you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no. Nah, he doesn't believe that. That hurts, because he doesn't really want to say that. He just sort of was backed into a corner there. He's willing to take that hit, I guess, just to keep this secret. Although he just saved their lives, so you're welcome. He's having a rough time these days, Niccolo. What are they up to? They just can't help themselves. It's that warrior training. They just have to be on missions constantly. What do the kids want exactly? What do they want from him? Huh? Uh, I feel like they're barking up the wrong tree here. Yeah, he's not the one. Oh no, oh no, oh no. He's gonna figure it out. Oh no. Say nothing, no. Gabby. <laughs> stop, stop it. Stop. Yes, Falco, stop her. Falco's always so reasonable. Oh no. No, why is it always... Why is it always Falco? Why do the good ones get punished? No! He's okay though, right? He's okay though, right? Yes, he's fine. Oh, dude, you really crossed the line. Oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> stop. Imagine, like, hitting kids like this. What? What are you doing? What are you... This is... This is too much. Like... He's not in a good place, I get it. He's in a state of extreme grief. His life has not been the easiest, let's say, recently. It's been a lot of up and downs for Nicola. Nicolo? But this is not it. This is not the way. It hits me extra bad to see Falco take a bottle of wine to the head like that, too. <laughs> He's such a sweet kid. He doesn't... He, like, deserves this the least, you know? I mean, no one deserves it, but you know what I mean. Oh, no. Ugh. I didn't know they would do this so directly, like her coming face to face with Sasha's father like this. No, the cycle of violence continues, but Braus won't do it. He's not that kind of guy. Oh no, everyone's here. <laughs> Things are really heating up in Nicolo's kitchen, I guess. Oh god, it's like looking real bad for Gabby. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly, not Falco. Wow, this is very directly, very directly, like, dealing with this. Oof. One of the things that makes this so poignant is the fact that pretty much everybody in the room is going to be on the same page in, in certain ways. Like, they're all grieving. So I'm sure that everybody in the room understands to a large degree what is happening and why he's acting like this and the feelings behind it. He's going to be a mirror for their own pain, but still it's like just a step too far, several steps too far to be planning on just murdering these kids in cold blood. And nobody wants this. Sasha's close friends, you know, John, John, Connie, they don't, they don't want this. Even if maybe on some level they do, they don't, you know what I'm saying? Mr. Browse, who's like caretaker of orphans, doesn't want this. Sasha herself would not want this. It's hard because you understand someone's pain in this situation, but it's a tragedy seeing them lose themselves, like just have this total meltdown where they're making it so much worse. It's hard to recover from this, you know, depending on what happens to Falco too. If Falco makes a full recovery, he's uninjured. All right, you can build back up from there maybe, but the path he's on now, he's building into the tragedy he's building into the devastation and it hurts to watch the other painful thing about it is like gabby needs to look at this you know we know she needs to have this kind of awakening and discovery but we also know how deeply that's gonna hurt when she realizes what she's done and that's so non-enviable it's brutal she's sort of like flirted with it i guess but this is very very direct confrontation with things she's been hiding from <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Nah, he wouldn't do it though. He's just not that kind of guy. That was a smart way to de-escalate the situation. Nah, I don't worry. Nah, he won't. Oh no, he's going to get him in trouble. Children of the forest. 
同じ生き方が続けられん時代が来ることは分かっとったから、サシャを森から外に生かしたら。Yeah, must feel incredibly responsible too. 世界は命に奪い続ける巨大な森に。There you go. Speaking of being an adult. せめて子供たちはこの森から出してやらんといかん。また同じところにくるくる回るだけやろう。我々大人の責任や。It's beautiful. And leave a legacy for the future. Erwin style. <laughs> so it's not my intention to be antagonistic by bringing this stuff up, but there's been a lot of debate and really good debate, I think, I would say, on the themes of the show. And one idea I see commonly put forth, well, a couple ideas actually, or a couple readings of the themes of the show I see are the world is naturally chaotic and therefore cruel, and that that somehow absolves you of any responsibility for your own actions. The main focus in right or wrong is what side you're on and picking the right side. And once you have picked the right side, anything you do is justified in the name of achieving victory for that side. The idea that when you are wronged or are threatened or feel threatened more accurately, you no longer need to have ethical considerations for what you're doing. From your own estimation, you then can decide that any action is okay. Corollaries of this are like they started it. What's amazing to me is that even though throughout the show, a lot of the characters have directly expressed these ideas, there have been a lot of episodes recently that to me seem to reject or contradict these ideas or show a path out of this sort of downward spiral. And while this scene is very over the top and dramatic, Sasha's father is one of my favorite examples so far. He, I feel, could make the argument the easiest that it's his right to kill The kids, you know, that he has the right to be outraged, that his daughter was taken from him, that he has no choice, he's being persecuted, etc. etc. What makes him an amazing character to me and what makes this choice heroic is that he has the strength to not become the same evil that he's experiencing. Like, this is very directly a cycle where everyone is a victim, but also a conscious actor. You know, it's both. Like, Aaron was born into this world, let's say. He didn't have the best start. There's been a lot of terrible things thrust on his shoulders, and he's been put through so many things, has so much responsibility for the future. But a result of one of his actions was to kill a lot of people that. Gabby cared about. And of course, he's not solely to blame. Like, Gabby was raised in a, in a terrible system by people who committed really horrible deeds. But then she kills Sasha, which in her mind is a, is a righteous thing to do, which leads exactly to this scene. And it's not totally linear in that way from person to person because it's a lot of influences happening at once. But if you get down to the, the micro level, it's all just individuals making choices. And so at some point, even though it sounds naive out loud, the only way out of that is for individuals to make different choices, no matter how difficult that is, without excuses and without the common patterns of like, they started it. Or I had no choice, or I perceived myself to be threatened. I should probably clarify that, like, I'm not trying to talk about the proper conduct of war. That's sort of out of my depth. There's an important lesson here about action and responsibility. And I think when done correctly, you know, when achieved, when one takes responsibility for one's own actions and decides not to contribute to the, the chaos and the evil and the cruelty, you end up with something of value that is outside of circumstances because you have become something great. That's one of the reasons why I harp on and on about Erwin. Like, he died, you know, and he didn't stop any of this. But nevertheless, he died a hero. So there's something to that for me. Sasha's father could die as a result of this, for all I know. But it doesn't matter because in this moment, he captured something pure and great. And that was rising above it and not continuing this. Train wreck. And since we don't know and never will know the ripple effects of our actions fully, that has beauty to me in and of itself, regardless of what happens in the future. And that, to me, in the show, creates such a stark contrast between the other philosophy, which is like, you gotta do what you gotta do to survive. How's that working out for everyone so far? Not very well, you know? It's not working if we're like slamming wine bottles over the nicest possible kid in the world, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is a key turning point for Nicolo. You can turn this around if you just don't go any farther. Patch Falco up. Yes. Please save Falco. Please save Falco. Ay, she's hurt more places than where she got punched. No! Stop! Oh, holy crap. Thank you, Mikasa. I, I love you so much. <laughs> Everyone understands each other. Sasha would be ashamed and disappointed. She'd still eat it though. Oh, yeah, there's poison in, in the wine. No, it's he's gonna be alright. What? Why? What the hell? Oh, good. We got a, a, a lobster card. <laughs> That's what I needed. Marley and cuisine. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks. Zeke's just been chilling in this forest. Does this put Levi against Eren? Oh, 
this is such a key moment for Levi, like where he goes from here. I can't help but think that that decision to save Armin isn't weighing on him right now. Levi's in a great deal of conflict, but I, you know, I agree with his philosophy for the most part. I think one key area I differ from a lot of people in thinking about the show is that I don't believe or I'm not convinced in people's ability to predict the consequences of their actions, especially when it comes to these large scale actions that have the potential to affect a huge number of people in very significant ways. To me, it seems like history is packed with examples of people committing all sorts of unspeakable atrocities in the name of what they thought was good, you know, even goals that in many cases were truly noble and, you know, truly directed at helping. Things can devolve so quickly because there's just so many things you have to account for. Unintended consequences, feedback loops that change the outcome, the fact that history is backwards looking and, and stories are written that oversimplify and miss some of the subtleties of what actually happened. A bias for the consequences that we see versus the consequences that we, we can't see, that in many cases are going to be way more impactful than the consequences that we see. And it's very difficult to navigate that world and it's very difficult to have the honesty, I would call it, to say, I don't know, right? Like, I don't know is sort of like a not acceptable answer and an unsatisfying answer. But in many cases, it's the correct answer or the safer answer. And so how do you navigate a world like that. Well, you just don't do things that you feel are wrong and you do your best in the moment. And sometimes that goes wrong because you don't have all the information. You never have all the information, but then you incorporate that new information and you again, make the best choice you know how to make. And I feel like having that kind of humility, having that self-awareness or keeping yourself in check and also focusing on yourself and your own actions rather than like how you're going to impact the world keeps things localized in a way that makes things safer and more, more pure, more wholesome. And I feel like that is one of the things I like about Levi and by extension, Irwin's philosophy. And so Levi is not inconsistent now to turn around and fight Aaron. You know, supporting Aaron actually was a reasonable thing, in my opinion. I feel like all Levi's done is do what he felt was best. And one of his leading emotions is caring for others. So wherever he falls, whatever happens, there's value in that. You know, speaking of intrinsic value to one's actions, just narratively, I think the key thing is for him to have a realization of who he is and stick to that and not be blindsided and destroyed by it, if that makes sense. Yeah, what, uh, yeah, what is this? And why, why is this? Elena was a busy girl. She's done a lot. But what does it do if they actually drink his spinal fluid? My first thought is it helps him transform people into titans more easily, but when that was first explained, it didn't seem like there were any criteria for that. Yeah, at least the truth comes out. Yeah, it's been a turbulent, <laughs> turbulent time for, for him. Here's a positive cycle, it seems. Yeah, yeah. It's alright, you... Well, I mean, it depends on what happens with Falco. I really hope for everyone's sake he lives. Especially my own sake. Yeah, but I think it's their understanding, their experience that allows them to see beyond this. They've all been through so much. Yeah. Help her, big brother Armin. <laughs> Another parallel, or Armin noticing a parallel. Hey, look who it is! Well, this is all coming to a head. So was he just buying time, I guess? Should've never given this man power. <laughs> At least he didn't come in shooting. Right, right. ジークの脊髄液が混入したワインが兵団内で振る舞われた。でかいバカになるだけでしょ。もういいですか。ケンペーダーが飲まされたとは言ってないぞ。He knew. Oh my god. お前らと話がしたくてな。Talk, huh?
with that uh, open cut on your hand. I feel like it's very important what Armin and Mikasa say next. I really hope that Eren is here as a friend. It's sort of hard to tell. Like, I know that he cares about Armin and Mikasa on some level still. He hasn't just, like, erased his whole thing, right? His whole life. He still has compassion. He still cares. He's just convinced himself that what he's doing, he has to do. And it seems like he's gone pretty far down that road. So, you know, it's not hard for me to imagine him seeing Armin and Mikasa as expendable too. This might be a last attempt to get them on his side. And in that way, it's a key moment, not just for him, but for the two of them, Armin and Mikasa, who already, are, you know, have growing doubts. Mikasa more so, or especially so, it seems. But wow, what a packed episode. There's just so much in here. I think that through Sasha's father's character, we directly confront some of the ideas that have been building. Some of the ideas I commonly see about the show, about like there being no choice, and what else can you expect when you're being attacked or hated? Sasha's father, it seems to me, has come to sort of like a, a big turning point for his arc, where he refines who he is and what he wants, and acts in defiance of the cruelty. Acts in defiance of the pressure, much like Erwin acted in defiance of his selfish desire to reach the basement. Much like Levi seems to be sort of starting that right now, where he's confronted with the choice. And the question is like, will he be able to do what he feels is right, even though that will obviously mean like tremendous risk to himself and sacrifice. And then once again, you know, taking it back to what I like to focus on, which is just myself, and not, you know, the, the rules of war or whatever. For me, that's a more inspiring and meaningful message. Like, I know I'm evil. You know, I know I have the capacity to do terrible things. It's, that's sort of basic. I also happen to know where that goes. Like, I know that long term, the worst thing I can do for myself is to give in to those things and do things I feel are wrong for a, a desired result. Those are the things that haunt you forever. I sympathize greatly with Niccolo because some of the deepest pain is the pain he's experiencing right now with the knowledge of what you've done, you know, and now you have to try to match the image of yourself that you, you had and want to have with the stark reality of a terrible thing that you've done. And I think to some extent we're all victims in that. You know, it's both, like I said earlier, we're both victims and conscious actors. But for me, a focus that I find important is like getting as far away from being the victim as possible like getting off the train that you start on and then being very conscious of, of like what are the things that I aspire to and want to be and what are the things I desperately want to avoid based on the pain that I've experienced and then sort of owning up to the fact that it's on me dealing with the difficulty of that and then consciously doing my best from then on out I can't speak for everyone else but for me that just feels better it just feels more powerful because I've, I've taken back some of the, the power from that like chaotic and cool system it's like whatever happens around me at least I can rely on myself, you know, at least I like myself and know who I am and who I want to be. And even when things start to fall apart, you know, even when things go wrong, as they always will at, eventually at some point or at times, I have that thing that I've cultivated, which is my own inner strength. And it's something that no one can take away from me. And at the end of the day, even though of course I have many failings and I make a lot of mistakes, generally speaking, I can look at myself in the mirror and like what I see and feel strong, you know, feel content with that. And conversely, when I feel myself making excuses or losing control and doing things I feel are wrong, but you know, have difficulty stopping myself from doing, or realize that the traits I'm exhibiting or the mental pathways I'm following are very, very similar to the things I'm fighting or that I'm against, that makes me feel weak. It's a destructive force because I'm eroding that that thing, you know, which is my my own track record of myself with myself. But yeah, that's enough rambling for for today. <laughs> See you guys next time when Flish Flush manages to get his head even farther up his own ass. <laughs>